Frequency, Chapter 3, Part 2 Wow, kid! Vinyl slapped him on the back. If this is how you did talking to the princess, it's no wonder you were in self-destruct mode the other night. He shrugged her off with a scowl. Kid, I'm probably older than you. And now he's inquiring about your age. Velva cackled. We've got a winner here. His eyes went wide once more. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. At ease, soldier! Vinyl shoved him playfully and grabbed her drink. Do I look like the kind of mare to get worked up over you being an idiot? Just to prove her point, she made a big show of drinking the entirety of her Luna and the Stars in one long chug. She slammed the glass down and sucked down air before wiping the foam off her lips. Oh, that stuff really goes down hard. She raised her leg towards Velvet. Give me another. Looks like some ponies in the mood tonight. Velvet replied with a grin, taking the glass. Vinyl shook the flustered stallion next to her, nearly toppling him from a stool. My first fan! You're dang right I'm in the mood. Fill me up. Flash tried to pry her off with little success. Aren't you still on the clock? <laughs> Look at you being all by the book. Vinyl replied cheekily. Don't sweat it, kid. Drink up and have some fun. Would you stop calling me kid? <laughs> Come on, kid. Velvet said another glass before Vinyl, who snatched it up with a gleeful cry. Would you rather she keep calling you Bolt Butt? Well, when you put it that way... Hey! Vinyl grabbed for the record case. Let me see the pen again. I totally have to write Bolt Butt on there somewhere. <sighs> I hope you're happy. I am. The buildings wouldn't stop moving around, and Vinyl's confident attempts to take a step back from Flash resulted in her plowing right into his side. I'm very happy, thank you very much. You do realize I head back to the Crystal Empire tomorrow, right? He wrapped a leg around her shoulder, preventing her from a second attempt. I'm going to be a zombie. Do you know how hard it is being a guard while also being a zombie? Hey, as long as you don't try to eat the princess's... Uh, brains? Who cares? Vinyl gave up trying to make her hooves obey, and let herself stumble along. Zombies are cool. <sighs> Whatever you say, Vinyl. He grunted and pushed against her weight as they stumbled along. He pulled out a slip of paper. Cardinal Street, huh? This way, then. Oh, look. Vinyl tried to study him, only to realize she was staring at his mane. She flicked it with a hoof and giggled. You're a zombie, right? You're a, a zombie fan. My first zombie fan. Two firsts in one night. She thrust the hoof skyward and nearly fell on her face. This night is so awesome. Flash tried to help her stand, but her legs were proving extremely stubborn and the street had apparently decided that it wanted to try moving like the ocean. She laughed at the silliness of it. Oops. She muttered as she fell to her haunches on his tail. Stupid street, you're supposed to stay still. All right. Flash grumbled, tucking the paper away. That's enough of this. Come on, let's go. His wings flared and he caught her up by the forelegs. Launching with ease, despite her added weight, he flew just high enough to keep her hind legs from dragging along the ground. What are you doing, Bull Butt? She chuckled. Bull Butt, that's great. Yeah, real original. Her eyes rose and she was rewarded with a menagerie of blurs floating past. Oh, what a trip. You ever try flying drunk, Bull Butt? Flash grumbled. I'm gonna regret this in about five minutes. Laying up! She kicked her hind legs playfully. Have some fun! Higher! I don't think that's a good idea. Higher! She squirmed, her hooves just grazing the ground as he wobbled. Her voice took on a whining quality. Higher, higher, higher! Would you stop that? Rising a little higher, he shifted his hold on her wrists. You want me to drop you? Face plants! Plah! She giggled and relaxed. We need to make a sport out of this. We'd be million. Million. Lots of ri We'd be rich. It already exists. He replied with a sigh. 
It's called windsurfing. What? Shit, some pony solar sport. She began kicking again. Find him. Lock him up. That's their patent, damn it. Yeah, they've been doing it since the Great Winter Vinyl. Aha! Uh -huh. Time travelers, too. That's illegal, isn't it? She peered up at him. Ain't you a cop? Shouldn't you be hunting them down? I'm a royal guard, Vinyl. There's a difference. Cop guard? You both serve the public interest, right? A crime's been commi- Commi- Somehow done bad. Is this your street? She blinked and looked forward. The swirling blurs did look vaguely similar. I think so. With great care, he slowed to a hover and set her down on the sidewalk. She promptly fell forward. Hello, grounds. Meet my mighty face. <sighs> All right, let's see. Flash pulled out the note. Fourth apartment, room 247. He tucked away the note and started to help Vinyl off the ground, which wasn't easy, considering she was busy trying to hear her hooffalls of buffalo in the stones. He got her halfway up when she noticed, curiously, that something was rising up in her stomach. And there it is, Flash said, stepping back as she threw up on the sidewalk. Knew I'd be regretting it. The world stopped moving for a moment, and Vinyl managed to sit up properly. Oh, that was pleasant. <sighs> Indeed. He pushed her along, gingerly sidestepping the mess. You think you got any more of that in you? I don't know. She replied, hopefully. Take me for another spin and let's find out. Uh, maybe next time. He pulled her to a stop and made her turn. This the place? She looked up at the building, craning her neck back far more than was necessary and stumbling backwards a couple steps. Yep, this is it. The apartment seemed to stretch towards the stars. The stars. She couldn't stop looking at them, even as they began to shift and swim about in her vision. She stared. Come on then, you're almost home. But is daddy? Sure, wh whatever. He dragged her up the steps and through the front door. Though she turned her head, trying to keep the stars in sight, she couldn't resist his pull. Oh boy, stairs. This'll be interesting. Vinyl said nothing, letting him drag her wobbling form up to the second floor. A desperate voice wafted through her mind, a voice she'd not heard in over a week. Then her father's stories came to her, and his sturdy voice blended with that of Addie's to make a strange cacophony. She could see herself sitting in her kitchen, her father staring at her from over the radio with... shame? Frustration? Anger? She couldn't tell. I'm sorry. Flash paused, leaning against the wall to catch his breath with her leg over his shoulder. What was that? I should have kept talking. No, you don't have to. Yeah, I do. She reached for her doorknob, but it was retreated from her. Apparently, it was farther down the hall than she thought. She tried to pull away from Flash, but he held her tight. Let me go. I gotta... I gotta talk. No more talking. He stood and helped her forward. We can talk later. Vinyl let a leg fall and focused on moving. It wasn't easy, considering the hallway was twisting around like she was in some giant wet noodle. She wanted to get to her radio. She needed to get to her radio. It seemed to take forever, but they at last reached her door. She fumbled in her pack, her hooves clumsily digging through them. Damn it, hooves! Stop playing! A terrible tightness rose in her chest. Here, let me. Flash grabbed the pack from her feeble hooves and started searching. Vinyl leaned sideways in an effort to straighten the world out. Her eyes locked on the spinning numbers of her door. Patty, I'm coming. Sorry, Dad. I'm so sorry. Vinyl? She looked to Flash, an act that sent her reeling. He reached for her, but was too slow. She fell against the wall and slipped to the floor, her sunglasses clattering on the floorboards. She was too busy crying to care. Um, it's okay. At last, the keys were extracted from her pack. Hey, calm down. Look, we're home. He unlocked the door and pushed it open before trying to help her up. 
Her hind legs refused to work, and she was too busy sobbing to try and fix them. So, he ended up carrying her inside. Wow. And Mom said my place is a mess. Vinyl just kept crying. That he didn't die? That means that he's alive. That's, that's right, right? It's not my fault. Of course it's not. Flash pulled her through the kitchen. Her eyes locked on the radio. She reached for it, but couldn't quite make it. It slipped away from her. Let's see. Bedroom. Bedroom. I wanna talk. She whispered, weariness coming over her. Let me talk. Maybe later. Ha! Flash brought her into a room and dropped her onto the bed. There. You just sit nice and tight. We can talk later. She tried to stand, but her legs collapsed from under her. A sob broke out of her throats. <laughs> Addie, she needs me. I'm sure Addie can wait. Flash turned and made for the door. Good night, Vinyl. Thanks for the autograph. What? Her eyes followed him. You're leaving? Uh, yeah, I've got work tomorrow. Don't go. She once again tried to push herself up. I can't full sit you while you get sober. He replied, pausing at the door. I'm sorry, but... I want to have toast. He stared at her for a while, then raised an eyebrow. Toast. Vinyl, do you have any idea how drunk you are? Nobody ever had toast with me. She rolled onto her back and stared at the ceiling, tears falling unnoticed down her cheeks. I want to hear somebody talk to me. No more silence. Talk to me! I need to be talked to! He was silent for some time. Vinyl began to drift, and the voices came into her head anew. Her father's, Addie's, Flash's, Velvet's. The music of the club throbbed in her head, and their voices washed around in tune to the beat. Yet it was just noise. A hopeless conglomeration of nonsense that started to sound like static. Her head felt thick like it was stuffed full of cotton. So many voices, all demanding her attention, all asking her why. I can stop. Flash stood by the bed, his hoof on her shoulder. Next time I'm in town, you and I will have a nice long talk. How does that sound? She looked up at him. The room was spinning, but he was perfectly still in her vision. The static came to an abrupt end, and the world started to fade. I... Would like that. Then, she drifted into unconsciousness. The first thing Vinyl noticed was the pounding migraine. She languished in bed, trying desperately not to think or move, lest she incur the wrath of her hangover. Many theories had been posited to her regarding what could stop this ancient enemy of pony kind. But in Vinyl's experience, none of them worked. So the best solution was to tough it out and try not to antagonize it. Eventually, the rumbling of her stomach outweighed her fear of the hammers in her head. She dragged herself out of bed and made her stumbling, tender way into the kitchen. Some cereal and orange juice for breakfast and painkillers for dessert. Chewing very slowly, she tried to recall the events of the night before. She'd gotten smashed after Flash Sentry showed up, but somewhere after that, things were a blur. She was reasonably certain he had dragged her intoxicated flank home, Seeing as he wasn't around, he'd probably left right afterwards. Ponies claimed she was a hilarious drunk, but she also vaguely recalled Flash saying something about having to work. What else happened last night? Vinyl closed her eyes and tried to think. A particularly nasty sting hit her, and she promptly aborted the practice. She pressed a hoof to her forehead and focused on relaxing. When she opened her eyes, the radio filled her vision. One thought came to mind. She needed to talk to Addie. The desire was so strong that she already had the microphone in her hooves. She paused, and bracing herself, tried to remember why she had to do this. What had spurred the thought? Closing her eyes once more, she tried to recall as much as possible about the night before. Flash at the bar, him wanting an autograph, her getting smashed in celebration, and some fuzzy nothingness. Stars. She remembered looking at stars. And then she remembered thinking about her father, though the context was unclear. 
She didn't need to know the context. Remembering her father was enough. Pushing her half-empty bowl aside, she used her magic to pull the radio closer. A glance at the clock revealed it was a little past noon. What if Addie wasn't on at all? Well, there was no way to know except to try, right? The power switch flipped and static hit her ears. Addie? She waited. No response. It's me. Final. I'm here, if you want to talk. The static pierced her brain, agitating her migraine. She rested her forehead against the hoof once more and listened intently. Addie, this is vinyl. Come on, let me hear from you. Nothing. Vinyl tensed and realized she was holding her breath. Addie, please, talk to me. I promise I won't hang up again. Seconds ticked by. Vinyl started tapping her hoof on the table. She glanced at the clock. Vinyl? I'm here! Vinyl leaned over the radio with a grin, then winced and fell back as her head throbbed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here. Are, are you really? She rubbed her forehead with a scowl. I am, really. Silence filled the room. Vinyl watched the radio, ears low. Eddie? You there? Yes, I, I'm here. I just... I thought I'd imagined you. Pretty sure I'm real. She grumbled. This hangover's way too powerful for me not to be. Nervous, brief laughter floated to her ears, followed by another prolonged silence. Final, I... I take it back, okay? I'm not really... Hold it right there. Vina leaned against the table and thought on her words. Let me tell you something before we even start, okay? Um, okay. How to say this? If she was dealing with what she suspected, then it wouldn't do to scare the pony off. She stared at the radio for several seconds, poring over potential approaches. At last, she raised the microphone to her lips. I don't believe your story. Frankly, I think you're living in some pony's basements or attic and trying to get some attention. She waited for a response, but Addie remained silent. With a sigh, she continued. I do believe that you're in some kind of trouble, though I don't know what kind. If this is what I think it is, then fine. I'll play along. I'll talk to you. And you can tell me all about this little story you've cooked up. A strange sound broke through the speaker. It took a moment for Vinyl to realize that Addie was crying. You can keep up this act. Vinyl paused to make sure that she was getting through. In return, you have to promise that when you're ready... You'll tell me what's really going on. Vinyl, I- You've gotta promise, Addie. Seconds passed. Vinyl rubbed her temple and wondered if this wasn't all a waste of time. She didn't even know what she was doing or how she would help. She only knew that she had to try. Alright, Vinyl. I promise. Vinyl's shoulders slumped, and she released a long breath. Good. Thanks, Addie. Can I ask a question? Sure. She pulled her cereal bowl back towards her. Why did you come back? The spoon paused before Vinyl's lips. She stared at the radio, trying to think of a proper answer. She could almost hear her father's voice ringing through the speaker. I... I, I don't know. It's personal. Oh, I didn't mean to intrude. Vinyl shook her head then cringed at the hammer blow the act produced. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, let's not focus on why I'm here, huh? I just want to help. Oh. Addie's voice was hesitant. Thank you, Final. I... I really appreciate this. You have no idea what it means to me. I might. She replied with a smile. Now, let's stop being all mushy. You're out in space, right? I... I thought you didn't believe that. She rolled her eyes. I'm playing along, remember? Oh, uh, right. Addie laughed, though it was a weak sound. Yes, I'm in space. Vinyl settled down in her seat, relaxing as best she could. Well then, let's see how deep your story is. Tell me about it.
This whole time I've been thinking about how to pronounce Addy or Addy's name, but I I swear I remember the author telling me this, but maybe I'm remembering a different person. Shit, my memory sucks. Aside from that, at least they're friendly again. Anywho, let's get on to our mighty donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkseid, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mordred, Omicron Library, Rinside 9852, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride Soul, Shadow Moon, Luigi 88, Chancellor Crest, Big Smoke 369, Jesse Smith, Bobcat GJF, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.